Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Welcome to Crochet Podcast, episode 134. Thank you so much for inviting me over. If you are new to this channel, my name is Krista and this is my secret yarnery. This channel is all about crochet and crochet related goodness. There's tutorials, podcasts, live chats, and a whole bunch of yarny goodness throughout the week. And if any of that is of interest to you, hit that subscribe button under this video right now so you don't miss out on any of the fun. And if you are a returning subscriber, hello and welcome. So glad we get to spend today together. Now, before we get started with finished object, I want to give a big congratulations to our winner from last week's podcast. Congratulations to Kelly Travis. Congratulations, Kelly. You win a free pattern. So send me an email, Krista at secretyarnerate.com, and I will email you a free pattern. And if you want to win a free pattern too, I'll tell you how to do it. Just keep watching. Are you ready? Do, do, do. These are a collection of my latest English garden granny squares. I love them. So you do a row of single crochet and chains working into the back and then all your double crochets stack on top of each other, pretty stitches facing up and it just looks so pretty. So that is my English garden, like a manicured garden. You know those gardens where it's like a maze and you kind of like walk through, it's kind of like that, it reminds me of that. So that is why I'm calling it English Granny. And it also, if you make it large enough, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six rounds or 12 rows really because there's two rows per, but six rows of double crochets. This also matches the Bloomscape Cal. So this is the Bloomscape Cal block, but without a flower in the middle. That's cute, right? And if you want to know about the Bloomscape Cal, it is a new granny square center, a new flower granny square center every month, and then made into this sort of block and then joined together. So we are doing 12 blocks all together and then we're doing the joining and we're going to put a gorgeous border on it. So if you want to join in on that cal, it is not too late. I will link it in the description box and up in the cards. And if I forget to link it, sometimes I do, I get a little, I'm a little busy. I have four school age kids plus you and me, I love it. So if I forget, just go ahead and Google Secret Yarnery Sti Secret Stitches Cal Playlist and Google will help you find it. And now it's time for Temperature Blanket Update. Yes, it is time to check up on the temperature blanket. The last Tuesday of every month, which was yesterday, I worked on my temperature blanket and got caught up. So that is like an early morning edition for me. We call it the, the Aussie edition because it is daytime in Australia. Normally my uploads and live chats are at a time like middle of the night in Australia or early morning. So once a month, last Tuesday of the month is our temperature blanket catch up. I also like coffee with Krista, anything like that, but this year I'm working on my temperature blanket. And it, so what is it now? End of May, so what, how many months? Four months, right? January, February, March, April. So this is four months, almost. A couple days short of four months. Can you see it? Yes, you still can. Pretty soon I'm gonna have to hop up <laughs> for you to see it all. This is four months of the temperature blanket. Love it. And this is the ultimate temperature blanket. I did a tutorial and a guide with all, and also a written pattern with all of the information you need, plus all of the templates for arranging your temperatures. I will also link that in the description box and in the cards. And we, we started out with hot weather, so my temperatures are inverted, so purple is the hottest, and then any sort of like bright pink is gonna be the coldest, with green in the middle. Okay, ready? So, 
so great, right? So that was folded in half. It's this wide. Oh, that looks even better. I love it so much. So this one is going to go across a twin size bed with drape and with tassels. So I'm tasseling the end of it. I'll add more yarn to make proper tassels when I am a little more finished or when I am finished. So I'm loving it a lot. It is really fun to work on and I'm just using like a moss stitch and this is three months. So this is one quarter of the height of my blanket, which is why it's the ultimate because it's not gonna be too big. It's not gonna be too tall. That's why we're using this gorgeous stitch and why we're calling it ultimate. So let me measure it for you. And then we can do some calculations. Oh, exactly. It is exactly two feet. So it's gonna be maybe a smudge, an inch or two longer, taller than six feet. So it'll be like six foot one. That's okay by me. Perfect to go across your bed. So side to side from your pillows all the way down to the foot. If it is six foot two, I guess that will almost enough to go over one layer of pillows and kind of give you that little tuck down look and then stretch out to the rest of the bed. Perfect, so perfect, so excited. And another great thing about it, the tassels, and I know tassels aren't for everybody, and it's hard to incorporate tassels into your life for people that are not into tassels. I was over tasseled in the 70s, so I am not a tassel person, but what I do really like is the Speedy Granny Ruth tassels. Well, any tassel that goes on the edge of a bed runner or a bed spread, I can have tassels on the edge of my bed because it just kind of like a little finishing touch, a little edge to it. It doesn't really bother me. I'm not really wearing it. I kind of think it looks nice on the edge of a bed. So that is why, again, ultimate, <laughs> because no ends to sew in. So every time there's a color change or the temperature changes and you have to use a different color, I don't worry about it to be like, oh, should I really change color? Maybe I could just use the same yarn again, like it's close enough to the same temperature. No, uh-uh. There's absolutely no benefit in using the same color row after row. So changing yarn color is not a burden. There's no negativity to it whatsoever. And I am so looking forward to this being at least halfway on my bed. It could almost be a bed runner on the foot of the bed. I guess it could be a bed runner, but I think in like two more months, then it'll be a fabulous bed runner. It'll be, you know, a bit, a bit like a wrap. Ooh, like a good wrap. It's almost a wrap now. Anyway, this is my temperature blanket and I hope you love it too. I sure do. <laughs> So that is my temperature blanket. I hope you love it as much as I do. Upcoming events. This is a new section, right? Upcoming events. What I want to do is be planning enough ahead to tell you what's coming up. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it, I'm gonna try. So upcoming events or live events, upcoming events period is going to be the live event or the live chat on Friday. That is our hook yarn and dish episode. So we talk about yarn, we talk about hooks and we talk about snacks, which I try not to talk about snacks, but it just comes up. I mean, you can't really hang out with your friends for that long. Like say after like half an hour, you're all kind of like in the kitchen being like, uh, are you opening the box of crackers? Or like, am I doing it for you? Do you know what I mean? So we definitely end up talking about food, but I also think that if, even when I hang out with my friends, we talk about food, if we're not eating food. Actually, usually I meet my friends out for lunch. So <laughs> then obviously we're talking about food because we're eating it while we catch up on everything else. So that is coming up on Friday, 5 p.m. in Nairobi, and that is the next upcoming event. And now it's time for your questions. I love your questions. Let me just start with that. So if you have any questions or comments for me, leave them under this video or any of my videos, and I can include them in an upcoming podcast. Gotta get my glasses on. So the first question or comment is from Cassie Trivet. Cassie says, I love your podcast. So glad I found you. My question is, how much do you crochet in a day? 
Well, wishful thinking, I wish I crocheted like four hours. If I could crochet every afternoon, I would be so happy. I think I managed that once. I did some sort of like block schedule. I did it for like five days. I did like a block schedule where first thing in the morning, I got my computer stuff done, then I get my house stuff done, then I get my kids stuff done, and then I get to crochet. So I loved it, but also, I think it was kind of during COVID and stuff, so I did a lot of stuff with the kids, and that kind of ate into my crochet time, which I don't mind, but it ended up kind of being like, how does a mother set aside time in the day for crochet? Like wishful thinking, I kind of gave up on it. I think I made it like four days. I started on a Monday, and by Friday, I was like, whoop, whatever. I spent a lot of time coloring the cute charts and making them look all cute, but, in, for me, impossible to stick to. So how much do I crochet in a day? Some days, zero, none, nada, zilch, nothing. Yesterday, I worked on a pattern probably for two hours. I worked also at night for probably an hour on the same pattern. So maybe three hours a day maximum, usually, if I had to even it out throughout the week, maybe an hour. I know, right? So on Saturdays or on Sundays when the kids are busy playing their games or watching movies or getting caught up on their stuff, their friendship lives, or what do you call that? They're socializing. Then I do sit down with my TV and my crochet and my hook and I do crochet for a couple episodes, which is great. I love to do that. So ideally four hours a day, I'd love to crochet in the afternoons, but not in, not in the life I'm living right now. <laughs> How much a day do you crochet? Let me know in the comments or let us know in the comments under this video. Next question, oh, I can read this one. Next question is from MD Quinn. She says, hi, Krista, question for you. Now that we're almost five months into 2023, did you have any yarn or crochet related New Year's resolutions that you met or didn't meet? One of my yarn related resolutions was to cake up all of my scrap yarn, still haven't done it. Do you have a scrap yarn stash? We would love to see it. By the way, I like the name Binders in the Back. I wouldn't change it. Well, thank you so much, MD. I appreciate that. Uh, goals that I set for myself, I wanted to put out more videos. That was my goal of the year, to be a little more consistent on my channel just for tutorials and a podcast. I was doing the live chat and I also put out one video a week if it was a tutorial or a podcast, but I did wanna like up my game a bit and put out both on a schedule. So I set out that goal and I have been achieving it Although some weeks I have more time to put together a podcast, some weeks, like today, I'm kind of just going to be a little more of a condensed version just to kind of fit what else I have going on in the week. But I do feel I'm achieving those goals and I think that is great. What other crochet goals did I have? I wanted to plump up my yarn stash, which I did plump up, but I also am not happy with it. And I know I have to change it. I think I'm just gonna put a bunch of this green yarn. I'm gonna put it down in my surplus, somewhere down in there, just cause that chunk of green yarn, I end up looking at it. I'm not saying all the time, but you know, like if you have a mistake in your work or you make a mistake, like you missed a stitch or there's a mark, a you know, you painted something and that one brush stroke is off. Every time you look at the painting, you're like, oh, look at that brush stroke. Or if you're looking at your blanket, you're like, yeah, that's the stitch I messed up down there. Do you know what I mean? Your eye always goes to it. So this is where my eye always goes. And I want my eye. How do I do this? Hold on. <laughs> I'm like, Okay, hold on, Where, how do I get my hand over there? Okay, there we go. I want my eye, okay, hold on, hand, obey. There we go. I want my eye to be over there. That's where I want my eyes to be. I wanna be like, boom, look at that gorgeous yarn wall and not boom, look at all that green. I'm just not happy with those colors. So yes, I achieved the goal of plumping up my stash or my yarnscape, but am I happy with the colors that were available, no I wasn't. I'm still not. So that's a little, I don't know, did I achieve it or I didn't achieve it? I guess in my mind at the time, I wasn't specific. Like I want to have the perfect yarnscape. I really just said, 
I want to get all the colors that I need. So if I need green, I'm going to get green. If I need yellow, I'm going to get yellow. If I need orange, I'll get the orange. But then when I went to do the shopping, you just kind of put in your cart what they have, right? You're like, I, they have this, they have that, they have that. They can't make, you know, you can't put colors in that aren't there. So I thought it was great. And then when I unpacked it, I still thought it was great. But then I built that shelf or like yarnscaped it. And now I'm like, oof. So I achieved the goal, but I also missed the mark. Can I answer both? <laughs> both. Now for my yarn scrap pile, yes I do. I have actually two. So this, where's my little container? Yeah, this glass container here, my little cookie jar, that is full of yarn scraps like little tiny bits. Let me get that for you. These are my yarn scrap bits. And it started at Christmas and then all the way up to now. Oh, what I can show you, wait for this one. I actually wanted to show you uh, during the podcast wherever that was, but I forgot. I can show you now. Look. This is Atlas Jumbo. And this is the yarn I used for my Celtic Knot Bed Runner. Slash used to be poncho, slash thank you Litsa, slash this is the yarn I used. And I love it like a lot. Atlas Jumbo. It does uh, fray a little bit at the ends, but you kind of need that to sew it in. So then I would just take like, you know, two strands here and five strands there like that and sew them in separate. So you don't have like a big chunk in one spot. You're kind of like doo doo doo. Plus of course it will not come out. So that is my little tiny baby scraps. I guess I could probably have dusted that before I showed you. Well, I didn't. <laughs> Mental note to self. And now let me get my big bucket of yarn scraps that are on my list of things to cake up. Are you ready to see inside here? Okay, so that's how much I have that has to get caked. <sighs> so I have caked some of them. I guess I should put these in a separate one. So I cake up my scraps on my, my little stand wood. Holy, I have this on no moving. So there's my little stand wood right there. So I just put my basket down in front of it and cake right from my basket. But I was going to do a caking party, I think in January. And then I'm like, wouldn't it be great to do a temperature blanket? And then I'm like, wouldn't it be great to do a coat? <laughs> There's so many things that get in the way of it. But yes, a caking party is in my future, obviously. So first bucket. Oh my gosh, it just went all over the floor. Come back, stay inside. Okay, so my first little bucket, I think this, I, this is where I was keeping my little balls of yarn. I don't know, we'll see when I get down in there. There is a Christmas stocking. So this is a prototype for my Christmas stocking, my pattern, but too boxy. So I, this needs to get frogged. I'm not sure if I've sewn in my tails. It does look like I did. Oh, maybe I didn't, I don't know. And I'm gonna try to frog this back. I can't see the tail for up here, which is what I'm worried about, but I'm still gonna try to frog it back, or at least if I have to cut off that little bit, I can frog it the rest of the way to get this yarn back. Now this, oh, look at all the stitch markers in here. This is Saver, my temperature blanket prototype in Saver but it's in with saver, so it's too, we have to use too big of a hook, and I don't know what was wrong with the length of it or whatever. Anyway, this is like try number one or two or something. Maybe that was try number two. I think this is try number one with little popcorn stitches in there for special days. Q. 
cute. And this is with favorite. And the length is nice. I think this is when I was changing colors or I didn't like the popcorn. I think I didn't like the popcorn. I think I wanted my blanket to be flat this time around. So my first temperature blanket, I did popcorn stitches for celebratory days. So birthdays, anniversaries, days that you want to remember, I did a roll of popcorns and it was super cute. But this blanket, I think because the colors are so great and the stitch is so nice, I just want it to be like just the colors, just like nice and flat and not have a texture on it. So this has to get frogged back. Little bits of yarn. Oh, tassels. So I cut all of these bits of yarn. These should just go in my other jar. But these are bits of yarn that were for tassels for the sample I made for my temperature blanket. So I made a little sample, a little swatch, so I had something to show for the thumbnail and all that. And I cut extra yarn, apparently, for the tassels. So this yarn is sitting in there. I could also use, let me see how long they are. Oh yeah, they're nice and long. That cannot be the right one. Oh, those are short. Okay, so these are too short to be the tassels I want in my life now. So I'm gonna put those. What are these? I think that's okay now. I'm gonna put these in my vase here. Okay, so that's helpful. Now, I have balls of yarn. I think what I wanted was this little basket here to have my balls of yarn in it. So if they're just little bits, I'll kind of just quickly wrap them up. Like so. Boop. And then keep balls in there. Now I don't do anything, like I don't really poke the ends in or like do something fancy to hold them together. But then again, I don't do anything fancy to hold them together. But this was for balls, so I'll just get it, I'll get the messy ones rewound a little smudge and then put the rest of my balls in there. I have a bunch on the top here, so they can all go in there. Oh, nice one. Oh, I have more. Is that it now? Nope, there's more. Well, that's a messy one. It's a lot. So this I wanted to do in January. So I'm, I'm four months behind my goal for it. What, how much? There's like a lot of yarn in there that is, oh there, it's not so bad. Okay, so there's my balls, my scrap balls. Then this is the real messy one. I try to keep it contained in here and if it starts getting out of here like it is, then that's when I need to frog it or get my yarn back, rip it, rip it. So this is great. This is Kenyan acrylic, but look at the color. It's amazing. So this is all I have left of it. So this has to get caked up so that I can use it. This is fabulous. It's not the best yarn, but the color is great. I love it. Oop, there's more balls down in here. In there. Now what I do with my balls, eventually I separate them out to like darks and brights and lights and pastels. So dark and bright, light and pastel, and then I magic knot them end to end, so, and then cake that up. So really there'll be a couple different, um, two different cakes from these ones. More balls. See, maybe if I got the balls out of here, I would not feel so bad. <laughs> wow, that one was even tidy. A green one, all right. Then in here, you know when your, your skein gets kind of to the end, 
that messy little bit. I put this messy bit in my, like that. I put it all in here. Plus if there's something I want a frog. So this is one of my very first projects. So I go, I'm like, I should frog it. And then I'm like, oh, but you shouldn't. So I don't have the yarn anymore. I gave it away. This is Karen Simply Soft. And this is a virus shawl. I, it's a really great pattern. It's lovely. Uh, it's not my pattern, obviously. So I don't really need to do like a tutorial for it or anything. There's a lot of, like, you know, it's not mine, but I do like it. So this is one ball of Karen Simply Soft. I could not make it bigger. I gave away the yarn. I can't use it. It's like just too small. I'll never use it. So then I'm thinking I should just frog it and get the yarn back. Like get over it. It's a nothing. Like it's just in a void. It's nothing. So I should probably frog it back, get the yarn back. And then, I don't know, give away the yarn or something. But it doesn't have to be like that. Then I have some fails. So these were flower bottoms. <laughs> Rose flower bottoms that just, they're not appropriate. This, oh yeah, I can still frog it. That's good. Make sure I haven't sewn in my tails. Although it looks like I sewed in one. So I'd have to find it and cut it a little bit to get my yarn back from here. And this one I can frog back as well. So anything I try that doesn't work out also goes in this frogging basket. Oh look, there's more yarn balls in here. Ooh, and Kona. Who remembers Ancona? This is such a great yarn. Doesn't have the woolly smell anymore. It's old. It's like vintage Ancona. Or Anco Anconda? Ancona? Something like that. Yarn balls. This is in a perfect world what I should do with my yarn balls. T put a little barrette on it so that they don't, um, they don't come undone. Oh, which brings us to tip of the week. when you think there's not gonna be a tip of the week, boom, tip of the week. So, so right beside my yarn ball winder, I keep a little pack of these little baby barrettes. They're the little metal ones that just kind of flip. They flip open, they flip shut. So you just bend them and they open up and then you put your yarn in and you bend it flat and they hold your yarn tail. So that is really great. I keep them by when I do a cake. So you don't have to like poke your tail in. You can just leave your tail how you like it. And then when you are done winding it, you just pop your little barrette on, pop it down, and now your ball won't get all messy. It won't look like this later on. They'll all be tidy like those guys. So that is tip of the week and how to keep your yarn scrap balls, your baby balls, all cute and tidy. Not like this, <laughs> right? So that is fabulous. And then underneath there, back to how I keep my yarn scraps. <sighs> More frogging. So I'm gonna frog this celebration wrap. I might frog it, I might not, I don't know. There's a lot of yarn in there. So I think if I'm doing the temperature blanket and I need any of these colors, if I run out, I will frog it back and retrieve those colors. If I can leave it, I'll leave it. But I don't know actually, who knows what I'm gonna do. But this one's sitting in there. I'm not gonna use it as a wrap. The temperature colors and my wardrobe just didn't go together, but maybe for a bed runner it would be cute. Maybe I'll keep it. This one here, Look how many times I started this temperature blanket. This one here, this has popcorns in it as well for, this, for the special days. And that's before I decided that I did not want any texture on my temperature blanket this year. So this one has to get frogged back for sure. It'd be a cute scarf, but again, not my colors. And I don't want, I'm not into the texture this time around. And another one, <laughs> 
another one here. So every time I started it, I'm just, I had to start it and get about this far in, like a week's worth, just to see the length of it, if it shrinks up, if it's the right stitch count, because you don't want to get going too far and then be like, you know what, it should be this much longer or this much shorter. I will try and try and try and try until I get it right in the beginning. So this is also ready to be caked up. Oh, that's cute. And then for my celebration shawl, these were the colors. I condensed down my temperature blanket colors just to the basics. But what I should have done is also inverted it. So warm temperatures to cold temperatures. Then I probably would like that celebration wrap a lot better than I do. So that's all a frogging mess right there. And that is how I keep my yarn scraps. And now it's time for your comments. Well, really, it's just one comment, but I think it is worth discussing. So let me get my glasses on. It is from Tiffany Patterson. She says, oh yeah, this is great, but what about us followers that aren't subscribed? How long do we have to wait for your cozy Cardi pattern? Not sure I like how you're not inclusive so much anymore on your channel. It's all about your members and your lives are just continual name dropping to those few you regularly chat to. Sad face, wondering face. So sorry, Tiffany, now that is not my goal, my intention whatsoever. I do have channel members now and I do, well, I'm, I'm, this does support my family. So I do want to grow my channel. I do want to say thank you to people that do support my channel financially because I think that is great. But how to do it and not offend people like you, Tiffany, which I'm so sorry for, I don't know how to do it. So. If you have ideas, I would love to hear your ideas. So what I'm thinking is we need to answer question of the week and give away a free pattern. So what you have to do to win a free pattern is, have you subscribed to this channel? Go ahead and hit this button under this video right now so you don't miss out on any more fun stuff just like this. Yes, you have to be a subscriber of the channel and also answer question of the week. So question of the week is, should I show appreciation to my channel members? And if so, how, how, sh how can I sh show, how can I sh show appreciation or say thank you without alienating people that can't afford a membership, don't want to be a part of the channel, but that watch and are loyal followers of the channel without the membership? How do I balance that out? So how do I show appreciation? Or how should I show appreciation and how often should I show it or should I mention channel members? I know it is kind of a part of our channel now, like it is part of how we are moving forward and I do appreciate that so much. See, I just said appreciate them again, <laughs> which I do, but I also just appreciate you for watching, for spending time with me. Everybody on the televisions who can't comment, I appreciate you. I appreciate everybody who just invites me over to hang out. That's the whole point of having a channel is building a community. But then inside that community, there's like another group. There's a community inside a community. So how should I balance that out? And I would love to hear all of your opinions about that. All of the ideas, we will put together a poll and we'll put that up on the channel once we see which ones are the most, um, or whatever your ideas are, the top ones or the ones that are the most popular popular, we will put on a poll and you can share your opinion there too because obviously my goal is to show, appreci show appreciation to my members but also to appreciate people that aren't members. I appreciate everybody. Let me know your opinions in the comments and next week I'll be selecting a subscriber who answers the question to win my latest pattern. And now it's time for news of the week. News of the week should start with weather. Weather is amazing. It rains at night, almost every night. It is beautiful in the day, almost every day. There has been maybe one day a week where it kind of drizzles in the daytime. And then at night, 
pours rain. So everything is super lush, super green. You can barely recognize the garden, but I'll get back to that later. So fabulous, fabulous time to be in Kenya. And now from last week's podcast, Binder in the Back, a whole bunch of great name suggestions for naming our new segment of grabbing a binder in the back and then getting all of the projects that are patterns in that binder and showing you the pattern, showing you the, the project. So I'm just going to go through a whole bunch of these names that came up. So it started out binder in the back and lots of people like binder in the back and they also think it should stay that way because it was replacing stack in the back. So a stack to a binder that has a lot of votes already is just keeping it binder in the back. Other suggestions are, and keep your favorite ones down, let me know what they are in the comments. So I'm gonna go through them all. Let me know your favorites down below. Pattern and piece, finished fun, FO show, love that. Pattern and project, whipped it up, binder blowout, happiness in a binder, binder broadcast, binder to blanket, in the binder, pattern party, binder in the back, category. Carol, genius, category, I love it. Hidden treasures, a binder from behinder. Now that one is clever, right? A binder from behinder, it's so fun to say, just saying. Binder diving, binder breakout, blast from the past, going on to page two. Projects by design, binder blitz, mystery FO, FO surprise, blank portfolio. So whichever one we're doing, like drunken granite, junk, drunken granny baby blanket portfolio, something like that. I love portfolio. Binder break, TSY pattern parade, pattern parade, I love it. Binder bits, break into the binders, browse a binder, so good, pattern to project. So those are just a few of the suggestions you had from last week. Let me know if any of those rung a bell with you or you enjoyed in the comments under this video, and then we will do a poll for that also to see which one you like the most. Polls are so great. And now, frankly, circles, it's an update. Right, Frankly Circles, it's an update. Totally, so update on Frankly Circles. It is coming up as a cal. Now I don't wanna say for the members, it's for the members, but it's as a thank you. While I'm working on it, they can work on it too. It doesn't mean I'm not putting it out for you. I'm writing the pattern for you, I'm doing the tutorial series for you, but friends, friends with benefits and family members can work along with me week by week until I get it done. Now, why I'm doing that, it's also motivational for me because if I commit to doing it, then I have to do it. Because I said I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. So that's one way for me to get myself motivated to finish this really big project that apparently I've been hoarding for two years. Secondly, it's for family and, I mean, it's for friends and friends with benefits and family members because it is not a tutorial right now. It's not a tutorial, it's not ready. We're working on it together. And how I see it is, people that have contributed to the channel in a monetary way, I feel, or I hope, or I assume that they'll have a bit more patience for me <laughs> to be like, okay, well, she's not done yet. Like if I let, if it was just like a crochet along for everybody, there would be people that would be like, that maybe don't know I have four kids and a busy life and like I can only do this much every week. They'd be like, well, where's the whole pattern? Where's this, where's that? Which is great, I get it. but. My, those people that have been with me that long and, and contribute to the channel in that way, I assume would have the patience for me or they would accept me to be working at my speed. Or if I write that section of the pattern and there's a mistake in it, they're not gonna be all upset like, oh look, there's a comma out of place. It's like, they'll be like, hey Krista, look what happened. And I'll be like, oh cool, thanks. Do you know what I mean? So they're gonna kind of help me work through this big project together for everybody. So it's coming up for everybody, including the Cozy Cardi. Was that a question I didn't answer? Probably. Well, answering that question too. So we do the crochet along. Right now we're doing the Cozy Cardi crochet along. Cozy, cro ugh, cozy Cardi Cal. So when that is finished, which is almost now, that tutorial will be coming out like on a regular Sunday with a with a written pattern and all of the right-handed, left-handed all to go along with it. So that's a whole set, a whole unit that 
the family and friends and family and friends with benefits did together. We all worked on it together, but it's also coming out as a unit for you. So the month after we are finished working on it as channel members, then it's available for everybody. They just helped me along the way, kind of like people have pattern testers or something. I just have a group of people working on the same pattern with me that we kind of just work together on it. So that's kind of how it's separated, but I don't want anybody feeling left out. You're left out while we're working on it, because not everybody's a pattern tester. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's not a finished product. So I will spit it out when it is a completely finished product and you will not be behind. No, no, but it's not exclusive. We're not keeping it to ourselves. We're just building it together slowly over two months. So that frankly circles Cal will be a two month crochet along. So every two weeks we will be doing a certain piece of it or a certain technique of it. And then at the end of it, we'll be putting that all together for a video. I'll be putting it all together for a video for you with a written pattern. So it's just kind of like, it's faster for people that have contributed financially to the channel, but if you have not, you still get it, you just have to wait for it to be finished. So I hope that makes sense and I hope that didn't hurt anybody's feelings. That's just kind of my thought process on also what would be more interesting to you. We did a poll uh, asking everybody what kind of perks they'd like for family or for channel members, what kind of perks they'd like. R a free pattern was one of them, very high up, and also a crochet along was also one of them. So I'm just kind of including that in what people said they wanted. And then each level of membership has a different level of um, access to the crochet along. So there's more details. If you click the join button down below, you can see all of the different, what do you call it, perks you get for joining the channel. The crochet along is one of them, but it doesn't mean we're hoarding that project to ourselves. We are just working on it un until it is perfect and then releasing it to the world. So I hope that makes sense and I hope you also join us. Did you get that one? Is that a push? Didn't mean to be pushy, but you know what I mean. I'd love it if you did join us. If not, I would love it if you did it together with us after the fact as a tutorial. That's also super, super great. So either way, whatever works out for you is great for me. And now I just like to take a quick sec and thank everybody for watching today. Members, non-members, well, if you haven't subscribed, I really think you should subscribe. Ding, ding, right there. But if not, that's still okay. If you're watching on your TV, you can't get there. When you are on a phone or a device where you can click subscribe, go ahead and do that because I would love to have you join us more often. And subscribing just means that you get a little, maybe you'll get an extra notification or I'll be on your homepage when I put up a new video. So that just helps you stay in the loop so you don't miss out on any fun stuff that goes on in the secret yarnery. And now instead of binder in the back, I'm gonna take you on a little tour around my lush, my excessively lush garden. I'm taking you outside. I've had a few requests to be like, it's gorgeous there, wow, tell me more about living in Kenya. I live in Kenya if you don't know. So I'm not really taking you out and about, but I'm definitely taking you out and about the yarnery. So we're gonna go around my yard. So get a cuppa, get a pair of shoes on, get a hat, and I'll meet you outside. So here we are outside in my compound. Always have a hat on, you never know. I'm just too lazy for sunscreen really. So, let me show you. Oh, I can even show you my torties. You're getting the full tour, okay, hold on. These are some of my baby torties. These are Marvin's babies. Can you see them in there? Boop. There they are. There is a lot. So they eat skooma, that's spinach. Where's Peachy? Is that Peachy? I think that's Peach. With the skooma in her face? No, that's not Peach, that's too small. There's a bigger one. There's Peachy. There's Peachy down there. She is big. Now I can't really open it up because it's a two hand. It's a two hand deal. So these little guys, they're really young and they're growing so great. So yes, we have to have, we're building another enclosure for them. Oh look, here's, here's Floyd. Hi Floyd. Floyd's out. Floyd likes mushrooms and she thinks my toys are mushrooms. Hi Floyd. So Floyd's a hingeback turtle. The babies are leopard tortoises. And she, Floyd is an adult female hingeback. She's going around, she likes worms. She's a worm eater. The leopard tortoises are um, vegetarian. They just eat like grass, really. 
So we let our grass grow pretty big by Floyd then. She's going around. Oh my gosh, what's that, Sam? Is she gonna eat it? No. She won't eat it. What is, is that a snake? No. Oh, that's a skink. Okay, that's always fun. That is a little skink. They hang out and they sun themselves on the rocks. I guess that's too big for Floyd. That's too big for you, hey Floyd? Not interested in a skink? I'm, I'm not interested either. Ooh, nutty, all right. So there was all this kind of weedy kind of stuff. It was flowering, but it looks like a weed, that stuff. <laughs> so we're ripping that all up from the flower beds and planting, what do they call these ones? Here they call it Indian shoot, but I don't know what it's really called. And then on the back side, nasturnum, because the rabbits love nasturnum. So when it gets too big, we can just rip it out. So there's tilapia in this little fish pond here. I don't think Floyd's anywhere. More nasturnum to get planted. This is Indian shoot. Well, that's what they call it here. I don't know. You can tell me what they call it where you are. But I love that color. Isn't that everything? So that is a really, it grows really tall. They'll be like way up here. And the leopard tortoises love to park. Like they sleep underneath it. So all along the back here, these are all brand new. Planted all the way along. And then this is actually our septic tank. <laughs> but it doesn't look like it. So we have some cordia trees. Planted a bit close together, but... What do you do? So bees really like these. They make a white flower that bees really like. And then this is, we call it the berm. We unearthed it all. It was just also full of those same kind of weeds. And we planted all this stuff in there. It's everything that's like green and some stuff that flowers. I don't know what they call these ones, but bees really love it. There's lots of bees in there. This is the big tree that we couldn't even see. Do you see how big this tree is? Like here's a swing set. That's this tree. It was covered. We couldn't see it at all. There was just a little bit of it sticking up. But it's a huge, really big tree. <laughs> or a really big plant. Like look how huge it is. This is a branch. That it was like, it grew all over this direction. This is all loose. Just to get sunlight. Oh wow, look at that thing. That is neat. And then this I've heard is an avocado tree, but you can tell me that it's not. It won't hurt my feelings. This is a bush, but look what happens if you never cut it. It blooms. Isn't that great? It makes those cute flowers and then it does some sort of, see that thing there? It does something over there. I don't know. There's, there's, that's Dingo. She's our rescue. I don't know what she's eating, something. Water dish for the tortoises, but they don't like it anymore. They, they like to eat with the dogs. They have their own dish, but they don't like to drink water over here. So we unearthed that whole berm. That whole thing was a hot mess in there. It was gross. Like, it was really, it was really gross. So then we have all this planted. Oh, this is grass from our old house. We just brought a little bit of it, and look how big it's grown now. We planted all this. So I guess it's almost been a year. It'll be a year in May, so pretty much a year since we planted all this stuff. Oh, there's my compost. That's not very exciting. That's my compost pile, this bamboo. I don't know why it got trimmed so much, but anyway. And let's see, swing set. My first thing I ever built with my YouTube money it was a swing set for the kids. I was, I'm still so proud of it. There's George. That's the urinary up there on that side, that window. And there's flowering. The trampoline is actually not as old as it looks. Things just fall apart in the African sun. Oh, there's machine and gun. It's okay, Grandpa. Oh, look, you got up, you sweet thing. So they're in hospice care, really, now. They can't get up the stairs. There's like two steps to go to their big area. They can't get up there anymore. I know, buddy. So we've got painkillers and arthritis things. She's, she's doing a little better than machine. So they're just here now in the daytime. There are, a, there are guard dogs. And now they're just really old, so they can't get to their house. 
they can't make it up the stairs. So here is my flowering, I want to call it hibiscus, but again, I don't know, but it's going to be flowering a lot. Ooh, look, it's going to be gorgeous in a couple days. This one is growing fantastic. Got these big, well, that one's a bit old. Find you a fresher one. Look at how cute those are. Most of these are a bit old, actually. We have to wait for a new set. Ooh, here's one. That's not bad. Pretty, right? I'd love to do like a Bloomscape cow with these gorgeous flowers, but <sighs> complicated. That's George, our resident finicky eater. He's very skinny, but he's actually not as skinny as usual. He likes palak paneer. He likes pasta. He, he, he'll eat like baby kibble, like puppy kibble, one kibble at a time. It's so exhausting feeding him. So another one. So we have a hibiscus here, hibiscus here. I want to plant one again on this side. This is my little patio. This is where the big dogs sleep at night. So machine sleeps there and a gun sleeps on the table. Isn't that great? And that is, I think it's Churchy. I think Churchy peed on his bed last night. So that's outside getting washed. Planting these mother-in-law's tongue or whatever all around the edge. They were planted before, but they're a bit sporadic. So we've got all that. Ooh, we've got, look how much weeds Sam's pulled up today. Well, not weeds, I guess they're flowers, but we're re-landscaping. So here's the bunnies inside here. They're getting rehomed this week. Bless their hearts. So we're just gonna keep the two. She had bunnies a while ago, so we have to. But there's Snowball. Snowball's the big one. Hi, Snowball. Hi, Snowball. Hi, honey. And then this is the mummy. There's Snowball. Hi, Snowball. And all the babies. Are they not the sweetest thing? They're so cute. Hi, Snowball. So they hang out in here. But they have to go. Too many bunnies. Okay, bye, Snowball. I know. They're really cute. So that's the bunny hutch. This is normally planted, but this is what got ripped up today. So we're replanting along here. More of this. Look how much mother-in-law's tongue there is. So we're going to like thin this out and replant that. This is my laundry area where I hang laundry. And we have our water tanks back here. Water tank for the garden and water tank for the house. Let me go all the way up here. And I put in the rest of these stones. There was a little bit of a patio here, but then I just filled it in with the mazeras. So we have a whole like clean laundry area. Those are the stairs that machine and gun can't get up anymore. And this is their real house, but not this minute. Oh, Louise. What is Louise doing over there? You see Louise? You guys are getting the full tour today. Louise, number one, how did you even get in there? Oh, right there. Okay. I guess she just walked in there. Louise, what are you doing? I heard she's laying eggs back here. Not that I really see a spot. Louise, I know you're eating my skooma. We tried to make this into a skooma patch, but it didn't work. I don't know what happened. Hi, Louise. So Louise, she's, she's lovely, but she doesn't like, I don't know how I can get there without stepping in this dirt. Oh, it's not that soft. She has, she doesn't like people that much. And you can see why. Hi, Louise. I know, I'm a person. You'll get used to it. See this gas she has here on her shell? She had that when we found her. I know, I know. So she's not, she's not so much into people, which I understand. Anyway, so that's one of the females. We have Marvin also. We'll see if we can go find Marvy. So now um, George and Ding are back here at night. I don't know what was planted on that. The thing about, oh, no. so I painted this before Tanea was even born. I made all of these panels to go around some animal enclosure. 
Well, I think it was for tortoises. So I pla it was like grass and everything. Um, it took me like weeks to paint it all. And I painted the bottom of the dog houses too. These dog houses will not move. This will be their last resting spot. I didn't think they'd even move to this house. I thought they'd fall apart, but <sighs> two dogs, three houses, they'll be all right. But where they like to sleep is over there. That's like a, what do you call it? Like a cow mattress. Here they're called cow mattresses. But it's like recycled rubber. It's a recycled rubber mat. So they love sleeping on there. And they also sleep like underneath this tree. This is machine and guns old area where they love to be. Dingo's not sure about it. She knows she's not supposed to be in there and she's not comfortable being in there. So I don't know what to do about that. These are all growing. Look how tall they are. And they're also blooming. Gorgeous, right? And we can take a little look around and see if we find Marvin. Oh, so this is like a back, this is my garage. I'm going to call that garage. The kids wagons, lawnmower. You never know if you, you, you always need bamboo. Clotheslines, but we have clotheslines at this house. We don't need them at this one. Oh, and here is Oscar. Oscar is the boy. Hi, Oscar. You're sleeping, Buena. Amuka, Amuka. Oscar. Oscar. So Oscar was living at my father-in-law's business for, I don't know, forever. He lived in a parking lot. So we brought him home, and that's when we found out Marvin was actually a girl. Who knew? Hey, Marv. I mean, hey, Oscar. Oscar was very precocious when he came. He would, like, chase us around. Dingo, you're not supposed to be up there. Anyway, I thought this would be a great area for, like, an above-ground pool, right? Sunny, warm, private. I thought it'd be great, but not today. One day. Oh, I planted honeysuckle all along here. So this will all be blooming eventually. Every... Every middle and, well, every middle and every center has a honeysuckle all the way along the edge. Eventually it will bloom and be gorgeous. Right, Ding Dong? Mm -hmm. This is from the neighbor's tree. All those orange flowers up there. Really pretty. It's shedding right now. Usually it's not quite so messy. Then this is my dog barricade to keep them out of my garage, which is also my painting studio. Right now, so I'm painting my bed, much to the chagrin of some people. All the flowers here, we just kind of planted stuff that grows and keeps the dogs out of the garage. More hibiscus here. There's two right by the front door, sitting in my little garden. Oh, there's Marvin. Marvin, I was looking for you. Oh, see, she came over to this water. Marvin likes cabbage, and she likes drinking water over here in that in that tray over there. Hi, Marvy. What's up? Are you good? I'm not going to give you cabbage right now because I'm talking with my friends. I'm talking with my friends. Hi, Marv. But if you want to see her laying eggs and stuff, she's the mom of most of those uh, hatchlings. That's over on Trip Trek Life. We caught her um, laying eggs like several times. I love you, Marv. Yeah, I love you. So that's Marv. Still call her Marvin, even though she's a girl. We thought she was a boy because she was dominant. See, she'll follow, she'll follow me because she wants cabbage okay well i hope you enjoyed that little tour let's pop back inside so i hope you enjoyed that as much as i did i am waiting for you in that video right there and stay hooked